If you're interested in cars and trains and streetcars, you probably like the Museum of Transportation out on Barrett Station Road. They've got a lot of things on display, but a few years ago, a particular train drew our attention. It's more than an interesting piece of American history. It's also a story about engineering and design and a big company that made a big investment and really missed the mark. Through the air by crane and then comfortably and securely on a flatbed truck. At least that's the plan. Special handling for a very special train. It's called the Aero Train and was once billed by General Motors as the train of the future. Well, it wasn't, but it is a popular piece of the Museum of Transportation's collection. It is rare, intriguing, a real looker. There's nothing else quite like it. Probably the most recognizable part of the Aero Train is the front of it. This is where you really see the General Motors influenced automotive styling and most particularly you can see that in the headlights up front and those... Is the museum has had the train for years but it used to sit towards the back of the grounds. But it was restored and the museum wanted to move it to a more prominent spot. And while the property is covered by rails, none of them went from here to there. That's where Larry Cowboy Premsey comes in. Okay, we are clear. We he is the clear. owner of Skyview Construction and Engineering, let, and he go, knows Jeremy, how to move things. Um, today's job here to move this locomotive is, is probably much of a rigging job uh, as it is a hoisting job. I mean, the crane picks it up, but everything, what we call the underhook devices, all the rigging that's attached to that, has load ratings capacities and has to be designed to pick up something like this. It's fairly long, wide, uh, and obviously is not really designed to be picked up very easily. Normally when we lift things up that are uh, new, like a new piece of equipment or locomotive, it comes with what they call a rigging diagram, where some engineers calculated the center of gravity, the center of the load, how it balances to itself, and we'll have a diagram of how to rig it. Well, in this case, there's no such diagrams here, so it'll be a little trial and error. Um, in addition, the museum has taken the motor, the generator, and the compressor, which are some of the heavier units, are out of it, as well as the fact that the fuel and oil tanks are now empty instead of being full. So, you know, is it, is it gonna be right? Well, we'll know when we pick it up. So obviously the people that are here, while they've worked on locomotives before, they've never specifically worked one on, on one exactly like this because apparently this is one of the only ones like this in the world. From LaGrange, Illinois, comes the experimental aero train, representing GM's new concept in railroading. Viewers acclaim it as promising a standard gauge revolution comparable to that which attended the adoption by the roads of air brakes. It was 1955, post-war America. People were buying cars to drive on new expressways. It was a new era in air travel, with that industry about to step into the jet age. What could the railroads do to compete? General Motors said the aerotrain was what they could do. That is Mrs. N.C. Desendorf, who formally christens the aluminum beauty in recognition of its unique and revolutionary character. For the aero train is the answer to a request by the railroads for new ideas and equipment, things that would cut costs, increase speed, improve riding comfort, and above all, reduce passenger deficit. This was not just a model or a mock-up for show. General Motors built two full aero trains, and a few railroads tried them out to test GM's claims of comfort and efficiency. However, Aerotrain's most startling innovation is its patented air ride suspension, which is achieved with giant air compressors in which the pressure is controlled for the load being carried. It had a lot of promise because it was cheap to build, it was fast to build, they already had the bodies there um, because they were bus bodies that had been converted to railroad use, but it was so lightweight and engineered to be so lightweight and streamlined that it rode very, very poorly. It was loud, 
it um, rode roughly, it was kind of rickety. It became a failure for those long distance services where people really over the course of the miles needed something comfortable. It worked okay in commuter service where people were on it for a much shorter period of time, but it just never really caught on and after the three experimental train sets no more were built. One of the other problems with the Aerotrain was that it was designed to run as a train set, so you couldn't interchange the cars out with any other kind of train. Those cars couldn't run with a conventional locomotive. If you had a problem with the locomotive, that meant your cars were down too. When they were finally taken out of service in the mid-1960s, about the only people interested in the train of tomorrow were the train buffs, historians, and museums. One Aerotrain went to a museum in Green Bay, Wisconsin, the other came to St. Louis. The train of tomorrow had pretty much been a failure and was now in poor condition and not getting any better, sitting out in the rain and the sun. But for all it wasn't anymore, the Aero train still had its looks. And it had its fans. We first did a story on the train in 2003 when volunteers were doing restoration work. The engine by then was in pretty good shape but the cars were having a lot of work done on the outside and the inside. Seats were scrubbed, vinyl replaced, and because these cars had been based on old General Motors buses, that's where they found the spare parts, like windows. Museum officials knew that when the work was done, sooner or later, they would want to move the aero train to a new spot. All they needed was Cowboy Premzi, who was giving them a pretty good deal on the move, to fit them into his schedule and show up with all that equipment. 93,000, what we got on there. It was just another day's work for him. The engine was safely lifted, didn't tip, didn't swing, and he never really seemed all that worried. So now that everybody's ready, what we're going to do is we're going to swing a little bit, boom down, we're going to center it over the trailer, and then the process of getting it cribbed on comes up. When the engine was finally secured on the trailer, it was moved ever so slowly through the museum grounds. This is a job you just don't rush. The new display location was on the lower part of the property. Getting this sleek and speedy train from one end of the museum to the other, from loading to unloading, it took a full day of work. Yesterday's train of tomorrow isn't what it used to be, and in fact, it never really was what it was supposed to be from a transportation standpoint. But if the engineering team came up short, those Detroit designers did a job that probably saved the aero train from the scrap heap, giving it a look that is still worth a look. <laughs>